Hey there, I'm Kim Sorges with Not Consumed Ministries, where we help families grow in faith so they are not consumed by life. I am so excited that you're joining me today to talk all about science. Whether you like science or it's one of those subjects that you struggle to teach, I hope you will be super encouraged by this video. I'm going to share my basic plan for teaching homeschool science as well as tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Before we can get to the nuts and bolts of science, we have to talk about our reason why. I have recorded my science vision and my reason why in the Organized Homeschool Planner. Every year I challenge myself to come up with biblical reasons why I'm teaching certain subjects. And I share these with my kids to help motivate us all as we study. For science, it's to help us to take better care of the earth and to help us to hear God speak through creation and how we can marvel at that creation, to help us to discover God's hidden treasures, and to help us defend the Bible's truth. I grew up thinking that the Bible and science contradicted one another, but did you know they don't? That's one of the most important things that we want our kids to get out of science education in our home. Let's dig into my five tips for teaching science. Number one, always keep science in its place. Science is only a core subject if you're in high school. If you're not, only reading and math are your two most important subjects. Now that doesn't mean you can't teach science or you shouldn't. It just means that we need to make sure that math and reading take priority over everything else we do in our homeschool. If either of those are not going well or need a little bit more practice, we need to focus our time there and we shouldn't feel burdened by the other subjects such as science. Don't worry, you'll be able to come back to those things later and your kids will be just fine. Number two, science is always going to be best learned by doing, seeing, touching. That doesn't mean we can't use books, but that's something we always want to keep in mind. Look for creative ways to get your kids a hands-on experience, whether it's field trips, experiments, nature walks, whatever it is. Number three, all science should focus on the scientific method. When I say the scientific method, I just mean we should be teaching our kids to be asking questions in a scientific way, such as, I wonder what will happen if, if our children learn exploring and problem solving and looking at things from a different angle, we have been successful in science. It's really okay if they can't name every bone in the body or classify every animal in the kingdom. Number four, whenever you pick a science curriculum, or even a science book, anything that's helping you teach your kids science. We have to remember to be mindful about worldview. Everything has one. Everything is pushing an agenda. And this culture more than ever, we have to be super careful. The Bible warns us against false teaching. The Bible warns us against wolves in sheep's clothing. Make sure to filter through and look at what you're teaching and don't just assume number five. If science is scary or overwhelming or you just love the idea, consider a class or a co-op. All right, let's get into the different age levels, starting with early elementary. Now at this age, I highly recommend that you stay away from curriculum. The biggest reason is back to my first tip that I shared with you. Math and reading must be the core in those age groups. We have to focus on getting really strong math skills and getting really strong reading skills so that we have that foundation built. Once that foundation is built, then we can branch out into different areas of science and social studies and electives and things like that. When my kids are little, all we do is read great, amazing, living books about science. We keep a notebook of all the things that we've read and we just explore interests as they come up. Oh, and of course we take a lot of walks, we explore a lot of nature, and we go on about a million field trips. Okay, maybe not a million, but as many as we can get in. Here's an example of one of the things that we've done for science a while back. We took a family trip to the Grand Canyon, and so we kept a Grand Canyon notebook. We explored and colored and drew. We actually did all of this before we went to the Grand Canyon, so she would have an idea of what to expect. It was tons of fun. I had her draw pictures and then I would narrate for her. Here's an example of an older journal. This one was actually kept in middle school. You can see she took some notes on some of the things that she learned and then she drew. This was for anatomy and physiology. You can do it thematically like we did with the Grand Canyon, but you can also just put it all in one and just go through as you study all the things as you read books. It, it can be a very casual thing to do. In fact, it really should be. 
All right, late elementary. At this stage, if everything else is in place and you haven't had any hurdles with reading and you feel like all of that is strong, it's a good time to go ahead and try a maybe a more traditional curriculum. My son Luke is actually going to be trying it for the first time this year. He will be in the fifth grade. He has not done a traditional science curriculum yet. That was actually not because he wasn't ready with the math and the reading, but because he was doing chemo treatments and I didn't want to frustrate the situation. I knew it could wait, so we focused on math and reading during that time. My two favorites for later elementary would be Apologia and Master Books. Luke is going to try Elementary Zoology by Master Books. One of the things I really love about this curriculum is that it comes with activity books and living books that are super fun and engaging for kids his age. And then it does also come with worksheets and activities as well. Here's another example. By the way, if you haven't seen these books, they're incredible. So beautiful, so fun. Another idea for later elementary, especially if you have multiple children, is unit studies. Now I'll tell you, unit studies are like my dream homeschool method. Let your kids pick a topic. Many of your kids, at least kindergarten through eighth grade, can explore together and dig into those things and just learn fun things. You can find resources on the internet. Some of them are already put together for you. Some of them are just printables and things like that. Some of it you can just start a Pinterest board and collect ideas and follow the interests and passions of your kids. All right, so most people would say that middle school is the time to really hunker down and push hard. I disagree. I think middle school is a great time to dig into some of those topics that your child has extreme interest in. We have enjoyed things like marine biology, astronomy, anatomy, ecology. My kids have loved it and really enjoyed studying those topics. It gives them a passion for science. So I highly recommend that you consider really letting your kids pick what they're going to pursue. My seventh grader, Nathan, is going to do general science from master books this year. Similar to the elementary age, this stage comes with beautiful books that are not quite as intimidating as a textbook as they're smaller and more engaging. Let's talk about high school. Of course, you have to follow your state's requirements and I can't tell you what those are, but I will remind you to go and read them yourself and read them closely. Parents almost always assume that you must take biology, chemistry, and physics, and it's absolutely no question, no choice. And if you read the South Carolina requirements where I am, they never mention that those things are actually required. Now, some colleges may require a science in those departments. I would highly recommend that if your child has an idea where they might wanna to go to college, that you go and pull up their requirements and read it. So far, we have found that colleges are not nearly as stringent about that as you would expect. With that in mind, we maybe have a little bit more flexible view of what high school should look like. So I have two high schoolers this year. Let's start with Rachel. She is going to be doing Biology 101. It looks like this. It's a DVD series covering all the major concepts in biology. She is going to do a notebook like this where she will watch the videos and note the things, draw the things, and document what she is learning. I'm going to have her do some projects and experiments alongside that. Now, the reason I'm doing it that way for her is because I want to make sure that reading is not a stumbling block this year in science because science should be about science and not about reading, right? My oldest child did apology as biology and loved it. This year, my oldest is going a little outside the box and she's taking a course called Experience Astronomy written by Luke and Trisha Gilkerson. In fact, just before I started making this video, she walked in here and saw the book for the first time and was super excited to get it. Experience Astronomy is a full 36 week course guiding kids through the study of astronomy with quizzes and lectures and all the things you would expect out of a typical high school course, but in a really fun way, because if you've not met Luke Gilkerson, he is hysterical and really a lot of fun. They also have a high school level biology class that's brand new this year that Nathan is excited about taking in a couple of years when it's his turn. Okay, that's all for science. Thank you so much for joining me. I pray that you were encouraged and you found a few tips to help you this year as you seek to teach your children how amazing God is through the study of science. See you next time.